this part, we move towards the coding for the full Mises plasticity with isotropic hardening. And the process is very similar. We will have to first copy the template of the UMAT in a text file or an Intel Fortran editor, which is very much the same as the previous part. The initial architecture, all that, all that variables I have already explained in the previous part, so I am not going to go through it again. Here you have to type your code and return and end will take the subroutine back after the updating of the stresses and state variables and other quantities which are needed. So firstly, we initialize the variables as we did before. I have initialized here the elastic strains, elastic strains, flow, direction, old stress values and old plastic strain values. Again, n tense tells, it's a three, if it's a 3D problem, as I told you before, it will be six. Similarly, the parameters like tolerance equals to one exponent minus six and the Newton iteration I've used a maximum value of 20. So after 20 number of iteration, after the 20 iteration, you might will basically say that, okay, your plasticity loop has not converged and we need to do something about it. You can also increase this value to any value which you want if you think increasing this will improve the convergence. We also initialize the Jacobian as I explained before and the material property is now have uh, Young's model as Poisson's ratio, yield initial yield strength value, and the hard strain hardening exponent Xn, which was capital N in the formula. Next, we initialize other variables. We recover the elastic and plastic strain and rotate forward using rod 6. So that's what's been done here. Elastic strains and plastic strains are being taken from these state variables from 1 to 6 and then from 7 to 12 and then they are rotated forward using rod 6 subroutine to account for the finite deformation. Similarly, equivalent plastic strain is 12 plus 130 as the as state variable 30. Next, we assign these stresses and equivalent plastic strains which are coming from the previous increment as old stress and old plastic strains. Next is a predictor step. So in this case, we have compute firstly the elasticity matrix, as I told you, mu and lambda. And then based on this relationship, we define the elasticity tensor, a stiffness tensor, which is given as the values. Again, I'm not going to explain that. You can work it out yourself, as I explained in the previous part. Then we calculate the predictor stress and elastic strains using this relationship. We first compute the trial stress tensor and then we compute the equivalent trial stress value, which is a four meter stress in this case. Once we have done that, we will just do compute the yield stress value based on the current equivalent plastic stress strain value. So we use the relationship which was sigma y times this plus Young's modulus times the equivalent plastic strain over sigma y to power capital N, which was this formula here. And then we determine if its active yielding is there or not, which is based on this function here. So again, we repeat the same exercise. And then if it's yielding, then we will compute the flow direction using the same relationship as before, which is the deviatoric part of the trial stress over the equivalent stress value. So everything is the same again from the previous part. Only thing which is changed is the sigma f value. Now we'll compute the incremental equivalent plastic strain values as before. So Newton method is needed. We first initialize the equivalent plastic to zero. Then we define the tangent stiffness matrix for the case of plasticity part using this relationship. Then we use this do loop to define first the residual part and then the updated value of the equivalent plastic strain increment using this formula, the right, and finally the ET value using this relationship here. And if everything right hand side, which is this residual, is approximately equal to the tolerance, which is one exponent minus six times the yield stress value, very small numerical value equal to zero almost, then we exit. If not, then it keeps on continuing until we go reach to either convergence or we reach to the maximum number of 
iteration which is 20 in this case if we reach to 20 then we have this fail safe condition where we print a warning that okay after 20 iterations this loop hasn't converged so we need to look in detail what is going on with our parameters once we have found the increment of equivalent plastic strain using Newton method we basically have to update stresses elastic strains and plastic strain tensor using these relationship here and again it's the same process so nothing is being changed here and let's use that relationship finally only thing changes is the sigma f rather than sigma y finally update that equi accumulated equivalent plastic strain by adding updating the previous equivalent plastic strain with the newly found the increment of equivalent plastic strain we can also calculate the plastic strain and energy density as I explained before using the relationship where this is the area under the stress strain curve. Finally, we try to compute the consistent material Jacobian using the same relationship of partial derivative with reference to that. So again, I'm going to use the same relationship which I used in the previous part. Only thing which is changed again here is sigma f which is changing as we are going as the accumulated plastic strain is increasing. So this is the only difference here. Rest of the formula and implementation very much remains the same and you, you might you can directly see from the previous case it is very much the same as before. If you again if you don't find it hard to understand this equation and this you can use some numerical technique to do that and again for that you can use CMO and Hughes algorithm which is quite frequently used to find numerically the material Jacobian matrix. Then we store the strains in state variables. So state 1 to 6 is elastic strain, 7 to 12 are plastic strains, and 13 is the equivalent plastic strain. And then we end the subroutine. This way we are, our implementation of UMAT code is finished. With the material definition in the Abacus input file. So similar to previous case, we will have a material card. Number of solution dependent variables. Again, in this case, we have 13 depth variables. And these are the variables as I assigned before. So these are very much the same as previous case. Material properties from three now it is changed to four. So the constants in the input file should be four. And the four constants are the Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, initial yield stress, and the hardening exponent.